welcome to the Trident Paranormal Show. Here is your host, Paul Rook. Good evening everyone and welcome to the show. It is the 21st of February and it's 9 o'clock. That only means one thing. Yes, it's the Trident Paranormal Show and I'll bet you've been waiting for it all week. Anyway... What I'm going to, what we're going to be talking about tonight is um, setting up your, setting up a new paranormal investigation team. And joining me in the studio tonight is Stephen Vernon. Hello, Stephen. Stephen. Uh, good evening. <laughs> That's right. Good evening, Paul. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too bad yourself. Yeah, not too bad. Um, I've had a busy weekend. Um, I, w- I was out investigating at um, the True Crimes Museum in um, Hastings. That's so, very nice. Yeah, it was. It was yes. very good. I enjoyed it very thoroughly. Um, the the artefacts in there are absolutely tremendous, um, and all pretty much to do with murder, obviously. And yeah, it it was amazing. It really was. Okay, I can imagine. So a few yeah. attachments there, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, there there is quite a few. Um, we, apparently, when um, I first went there, one of my teams they they were claimed that they were in contact with Amelia Dyer. I don't oh, know if you, um she apparently she murdered thousands and well hundreds and thousands of babies all for money but I don't know. Yeah, the, the, the name rings a bell but no I'm not not, not knowledgeable of the uh, story but uh... <laughs> no totally. Um not, I, not I'm sure I'm not sure we got the podcast out there somewhere from um, the T files on Monday nights. Um, Amelia Dyer was featured heavily in one of them, I think. Um, so anyway, let's let's talk about you because that's what we're here for. Um, so your paranormal team or your paranormal group is the Gospel Paranormal Club. That's correct. Yes. Um, what inspired you to set that team up? Um. I, th- I think for me, it's just been a case of part of, um, and I still am part, uh, members of uh, other paranormal groups. Um, but it's what they think the paranormal was about. Um, so what I wanted to do was to just set up uh, a club, literally just a club, a, a local club, um, which where you, we could just get like-minded people together who have an interest in all things paranormal, whether it be you know, ghosts, whether it be uh, UFOs, whether it be um, cryptozoology, anything at all but but would encompass the whole of the paranormal. Um, So that that was why I wanted to set it up. It was just a case of, you know, and and, and not not be constricted to, you know, going on a ghost hunt, which which are fine and and I love doing them. But, you know, just then you're going on a ghost hunt, you're using the equipment, um, you're yeah, being in, in some cases, depending on the group, you, you're being led as well. And I, I don't want to do that to people. I don't want to go out to a, a location and tell people what I think they're going to experience. That's not what, for me, investigating is about. It's it's mm. about experiencing what there is to experience, if anything at all. That's it. I, I totally agree with that. And when I set up my team in particular. Um, we decided that any investigation we go into, even the hosts don't um, invent, like look at the history and other reports and stuff. Obviously, they know it's haunted because that's why we booked the venue. Yeah. But yeah. you know, as to any information, they're not told anything, so they yeah. go in just as blind as the guests do. So yeah, they they can't obviously lead, and we always say to our like trainer hosts to be there as guides but at the same time it's not their investigation it's the people who pay to come on the investigation it's their you know their their event their investigation type thing and yeah you know you they're just there to help them understand the equipment and you know do do the ghost yeah ex- exactly i mean for me particularly at the moment anyway because there are so many good groups out there that, that do the paid investigations, you know, like yourselves and and there are, well, are many others that, that, that I'm not going to mention. But what I want to do is, is get away initially from that, um, you know. So particularly down here in the south coast of, 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 of England, you know, we've got so many nice places that are open and free where we can investigate. 
Uh, you know, we've we got Knoll Cemetery, which is a cemetery that's um, on the disused grounds of a, of, of a mental asylum. We've got uh, Borchester Castle, which is uh, one of the oldest uh, medieval castles, if not that, if not the oldest um, in in the UK. Um, you know, so there are many, many places that that we can investigate for nothing. So being able just to go out with people who basically I want to become friends with is 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 just nice because yes, it can be lighthearted. Yes, you can have a laugh. But you've got nobody there trying to be better than anybody else, um, which, which for me is, is what it's about. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Um, you know, there, as you, as you said, there are three places to go, and that is quite good. But then, on the other hand, obviously, you have got locations that do charge an extortionate yeah. amount of money. Yeah, um, exactly. But have you, have you ever tried getting into those places and asked for free nights? Not, not as yet, no. Um, I mean, the, the group um, that I'm trying to set up, at, or that I've set up at the moment, um, literally is 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 brand new. Um, we've been going now literally for just a couple of weeks. Um, my idea was initially to keep it, if possible, to people local to, to here. But one of the things that I put on the, the club's um, Facebook page was what I wanted to do was also make it a club for learning, to learn about the paranormal, what the paranormal actually meant. Um, so, you know, we, we would put things up about rune stones. We would put things up about crystals, how to use crystals and, and, and stuff like that. And what I found is, I mean, in, in two weeks, we've, you know, our membership is is gone beyond what I thought it would do in just two weeks. Um, but we've also got people from the States asking to join because of the fact all I'm trying to do is, is, is put paranormal out there as a bigger compass rather than just ghost hunting or or just using Ouija boards and stuff because that's not what it's about. No, I, I agree. And it's not. It's just a small part of the paranormal. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, o- over the weeks that I've been doing these shows, I've I've been covering obviously the the, the ghost side of it as well as the yeah. um, cryptozoology and and stuff like that. You know, I I actually love that subject myself because there's such weird and wonderful creatures out there. That's fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but you know, not so much in this country, um, but you know, generally, you know, I would love to be able to go to to the states and, and actually you know look for bigfoot whether it exists or not i don't well, know apparently but... <laughs> there's supposed to be a bigfoot in this country as well is there really there is i, I don't know too much about it i've not really no. looked into it but um yeah apparently so there is there is supposed to be a bigfoot around england somewhere i don't know i mean if anyone knows in the chat room that um you know where this bigfoot is supposedly to be let us know. It'd be really good to find out. Actually. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, like a nice drive. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, a road trip. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so what is it? What is it that sort of got you into the paranormal? Then, right at the beginning. Um, f- for me, right at the beginning, um, I was. It's, it's literally an experience I had um, when I was at home. Uh, it was literally um, one night, um, in early hours of the morning, I think it was about two or three in the morning. I was only about seven, um, which is a long, long time ago now, unfortunately. Um, I remember hearing um, a noise downstairs. Now, we didn't have a dog. We didn't have cats. We had a bird in a cage, but but that was it. But this was something being moved about. Now, initially, I thought it was just um, you know one of my parents. Uh, my dad used to do shift work. So it wouldn't be, you know, beyond the realms of possibility that it was him coming in late from work or something. Um, so I didn't think too much of it. Um, but then it continued. So I thought, eh, OK, I'm awake. I'm gonna, I'll go downstairs. And um, went downstairs, walked through the hall into the kitchen. Now, it's not a particularly old house. It's a reasonably modern house, but it had a, a walk-in pantry. Um, for those people that know what pantry is, um, it's like, like a fridge without a fridge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we, my parents used to keep all the, um, you know, 
the salt, peppers, all the sauces and all that in there. Um, when you walked into it, there was only enough room for one person to stand in there and look around the shelves. And, and that was it. But the, the door was open and I could hear, as I say, some something, some rustling. So I, I thought, eh, again, could just be one of my parents or even my sister having a midnight snack. So I called out and I got no answer. And I thought, okay. So I went a bit further. Um, at that age, you don't know, you don't care. And I called out again and um, I heard a whisper. And the whisper was as clear as anything I've, you know, as I, I'm talking to you now. And he said, he can see us. I thought, and I can't see anything. It's pitch black and I'm not putting a light on. Um, but it literally was a, a, a very like, he can see us. Um, yeah. And I thought, okay, that's not, certainly not us because, you know, it's, it's, it's not big enough for two people. Yeah. And obviously the next thing that goes through your mind is, are we being burgled? No, we weren't because it was pretty obvious that there was nobody else in the house apart from everyone who was asleep upstairs. And um, all of a sudden, the, the door creaked for a little bit more. And I thought, OK, I'm now starting to get a little bit freaked about this. And my parents used to have um, silver, but well, they weren't silver, they were just like cheap. Um, salt and pepper pots um, and one of them came out of the cupboard um, at speed in my direction at that point I just thought no I don't care if we're being burgled I don't care if anyone's having a midnight snack I'm going back up to bed um, promptly <laughs> ran upstairs as you do <laughs> promptly, promptly ran upstairs put me head under the, under the cover and thought yeah, um, I talked to my parents in the morning about that and just see which one of them was playing silly buggers. But um, they weren't. And um, from that point, I always then had an interest in thinking there is something more to, you know, the, than just what we see. Um, yeah. and, and that really sparked my interest in in, in ghosts in general, but, but para, you know, paranormal as a... As a as an existence as an entity, really. Yeah. Uh, did you did you like obviously in later life look back that instant and try to explain it or even? Oh, um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, did you do you any know, research on the house at all? Or? Unfortunately, no. We moved out while I was still too young, um, and I've, I've certainly not been back since. Um, but you know, I've, I've been to other relatives houses where things have happened that that just can't be explained you know whether it be a, a friend's daughter um describing in great detail her dead father's image yeah. um who she never met because she hadn't been born when he passed away things like that you know and, and you can't rationally explain that because no. it, it just it just can't you know that they're there are many things that just are beyond what I think we look at when we're adults. I think when we're children, I think we're more susceptible to, you know, whether, whether it's a veil between different, you know, between different pl planes or, or whatever. I think as we get older, if that plane does exist, we're conditioned to not see it. Yeah, I I I sort of agree. I mean, obviously, when you're children, that your brain is sort of empty of information, so to speak. Yeah. And then, obviously, as years go on, your your mind's filled with everything that you need um, for your social life and and yeah, you know, your future yeah. and stuff. And and um, also, we're, we're taught or we're told what is real and what isn't, and and you know, the boundaries are, are set. Yeah. The the what we're you know what we think we we're seeing. Because we can't touch it, it isn't real. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I think for for me and a lot of other paranormal investigators, it, it's tr not trying to get back to that because we never could. But scientifically, it's, it's trying to prove that actually there is a veil between maybe one world and another. And then it's trying to see what that veil leads to. Yeah, I, I sort of I can see what you what you're saying, and I I, ag I agree, you know. But I think um, science 
they won't. I, I don't think they will actually accept the paranormal until they can actually test it out properly. But they've got to be able to know what it is in the first place to warrant that, if that makes sense. It does, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we know about the stone tape theories and things like that. Um, I think that's a very good explanation for a, major, a lot of, of, of hauntings. Mm. Um, there's no, there's no reason why, you know, an, an old castle that something traumatic's happened, whether it be battles or whether it be where the troops have been, you know, have, have gone to, to, to be patched up after battle. There's no reason why the energy that that would generate can't be trapped within, you know, limestone or whatever. So I, th- I think that, 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 as you say, it's, it's, it's in, next to impossible at the moment to say that's definitely it but it's a good place to start and then some of the equipment that that is there these days i think it's getting closer to being able to help yeah bring bring stuff forward absolutely and i i've always said that what we're doing now is pretty much like building the foundation blocks of a giant pyramid sort of thing and yeah everything that we learn today will be just built upon in the next generation until eventually they can come up with some technique to um, investigate and prove one way or the other. That, yeah. That's sort of what I believe. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, I don't see why that can't happen. You know, you, you, you go back 20 years, 25, 30 years, the technology leaps we've had in that time you know, what's it going to be like in another 200 years? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I, I, yeah, there's been lots lots of new technology in my lifetime. Absolutely. It's... Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, UFOs, have you experienced any UFO activity? Yes, I have. Um, I, one summer night, um, and it, it, this was a mass sighting as well. Um, Near where I used to live in uh, Richmond, in London, there's... Uh, well, sorry, actually, they won't like it if uh, anyone's listening from Richmond, sorry. Um, they There's a, a, a local um, sports club, and um, one very nice summer's night, we, they, we were all out watching a, a game of cricket. Um, we were all you know, having fun, playing whatever, just mucking about. And in the distance, um, there was this uh, stationary light now... We knew it wasn't a star. Don't know how, but we, we just knew. And a few of us were just sitting there watching it. And all of a sudden, it split into two. Um, no sound. I mean, it was it was quite a long way away, so it's not it, you know it wasn't above us or anything. Yeah. But it split it split into two. Um, and then about five minutes later, a third, smaller, um, light. I can't say disc because it wasn't. It was a light. Appeared from below it. And um, fell to fell to fell to earth. That's what it looked like. Hmm. It looked like something had come out between the two and fallen to earth. Now we didn't think too much of it. We just thought, "Oh, that's weird." Um, they were just white lights. Um, but when that, about another twenty minutes after that, um, about five fire engines uh, went past. Now, subsequently. Um, it turned out that we, we used to be very close. We live very close to uh, Richmond Park mm. um, in, in London. And allegedly, um, but it was reported in the press, um, that something unexplainable had fallen from the sky, and they didn't know where, onto um, what was some buried, very dry ground on Richmond Park and started a fire. Now, again, I'm sure there's a, a very, very good reason someone, you know, discarding something they shouldn't have done, which has caused a fire. But at the time, it was just so coincidental that, you know, that happened. We saw that. And then 20 minutes later, the fire brigade are on their way to a fire. Hmm. Um, so, but, but yeah, that, 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 that was my f- first U- UFO site. And I, there have been a few others that, have, you know, unexplained lights and stuff like that but yeah. you know if you if you look hard enough you, you're going to see something at some point but 
I, I'm but, yeah, sure, so. yeah. I mean, I'd, I've never actually had that experience of any UFOs. Um, but um, Richard in the chat room, he's actually said that apparently there's lots of legends up in Scotland about Bigfoot. So that, there you go. There's some cryptozoology for you. Okay, yeah, And lovely. he's also said that, um, have you had a chance to investigate Hasla Hospital? I think it's Hasla. It is Hasla. Um, unfortunately, no. Um, the MOD, to my knowledge, um, still own the site itself. Um, and at the moment, locally, that is a really um, touchy point. Um it should never have been closed. Um, I don't want to get into political debates, but it should never have been closed because locally that leaves us with just one hospital, um, which is, is ridiculous. Um, but the site itself is still owned by the MOD because it was always an MOD hospital as, yeah. as such. Um, and they won't allow anybody into it. Um, to my knowledge, um, most of it's been stripped. Um, whether there's anybody listening who, who can, um, you know, say otherwise, but to my knowledge, most of the building is now stripped. There's talk of um, turning it into luxury flats and, and stuff like that. Um, but no, um, the MOD, um, particularly down here, are very guarded about allowing anybody to investigate on any of their uh, sites. So, unfortunately, no. Yeah, One I'm I would sure. love to do, but... <laughs> I'm sure a few urban explorers might be get, getting the chance to get uh, in it. <laughs> there's the, there's uh, still armed guards um, at the gate and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, oh, okay. good luck to them. They, they want to take the chance, they can. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree. Um, yeah, so cryptozoology. What sort yes. of got you into that? Um, I think it's, it's just, just the part of the paranormal paranormal really it's um obviously just the idea i think for me initially particularly obviously being in the uk was probably Loch Ness. and yep. being of the age i am unfortunately i can remember when some of the now proven hoax photos came out yep. um so it was always a case of you know the, the possibility and, and and quite probably you know somewhere there being um, a, 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 a nice shelf where something prehistoric has been isolated and and been kept alive, and obviously as ice ice shelves melt, maybe they've um, then you know just just been have, have the uh, license to, to to roam freer. But so I think that it was certainly Nessie for me that that it's got me started in um, yeah. that. Then obviously you've got. Um, various, um, exactly, you know, similar things over in Canada. Um, obviously, Bigfoot, the Yeti, um, you know, uh, Bay Wolves, and anything like that. Um, that I've always had an interest in since then. Yeah. Uh, it's just so a case one day. So you've not seen anything on roaming the Bodmin Moor or anything? <laughs> no. no, unfortunately not. No, <laughs> no, that's that's not something I can tick off a bucket list yet. Having seen a, 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 a an unexplained animal, unfortunately. So okay. So what? So what else in the paranormal field is on your bucket list? Um, I think ultimate bucket list number one. I, I, yeah, we would take a, a, a miracle, but it's obviously to go to um, to the hotel in the states where Stephen King uh, wrote The Shining or wrote yep. The Shining about. Um, I can't remember what the hotel's called now; it's gone, gone completely from my mind. Um, but but to to go there, um, that would be number one. Yeah. Um, others are to um, you know be able to walk freely. Um, London uh, Tower of London, the history that 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 has um, would be for me um, phenomenal, and I, I I can't imagine for one minute that if um, you know ghosts exist that, that there would be for me a, a, you know a, a very good chance of, of something happening there, particularly with anything everything that's gone on there. So yeah, Tower of London. I, I would um, imagine there's a lot of. Um... Emotion as well in, exactly. in the tower, 
because it yeah. was used as a prison as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, people were tortured. I, I do, I do believe that the Crays were the last people to be held there as a prison. I'm sure I don't know. Um, I'm but... sure that's right. I think that the Crays were like one of the last prisoners. Yeah. To, to the tower. Yeah. I so, do vaguely remember that in my history classes. <laughs> <laughs> you paid a lot more attention than I did. Um, <laughs> and, but, yeah, I, I have tried to do an investigation in there. Um, I, I inquired to whether or not they would let, allow us to do a, t- a team event there. But yeah. sadly they said no because it's still lived in, basically. Um, oh, right. So, some of the beef eaters and the guards, oh, right. guardsmen and stuff all live in like a row of houses that are inside the walls of the tower so they won't actually allow any paranormal event teams or any paranormal teams in there at all sadly oh yeah that is so, sad but um, uh, yeah, uh, so Lin- th- Lindsay in the chat room said it's the Stanley Hotel in Colorado that's it thank you Lindsay that's yes. the one <laughs> that's the one <laughs> that's it yeah I would I would love love to go there um, I, I've actually yeah, investigate I, I do remember um I think it was the TAPS team. Oh, who was it? The Ghost Adventures? Yes. Or Ghost... Uh, to be fair, I think they've all been there. Uh, uh, yeah. The the one I remember is that they were sleeping in one of the bedrooms and a glass shattered right next to them. Yeah. And and they had it on camera. Yeah. Which was quite spooky in itself, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think a lot of the shows... Um, for me unfortunately you have to take with a pinch of salt but you know but yeah it it, it still doesn't prove something didn't happen um I, I so yeah i understand that and I, although although some most of those shows i don't i don't watch any of those shows anymore um because i i've experienced stuff for myself so i don't yeah. I, I, you know, I, I know they build it up for TV, and sometimes that annoys me. So I, I sort of don't watch them anymore for that yeah. reason. But you know, I, I do think they still have their place because if it wasn't for those shows, then companies like mine, for example, wouldn't be able to put the events on because no one still would be interested. No, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, with, with with you know with, without. Most haunted and, and 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 without ghost ghost adventures and, and whatever. Yeah, you're quite right. None of us possibly would have had an interest that we have now. Um, I, so no, they've they definitely got a place. I, I do know a lot of teams that have sprouted out, sprouted out because of those um, those sort of shows. And you know, I'm not not saying that these groups are not as you said. That there's no one better than anyone else in the paranormal no. field we all do di- no. things differently and yeah. you know okay some people might might be a little bit better and more experienced than others but I think it's about educating and teaching each other and learning from each other is important and, yeah absolutely you um, know, I, um, I know I know the term um, par- paranormal unity is bandied about a hell of a lot but mm. you know there, there is that, and I've always worked. I, I like to work to the whole parry unity idea, um, but there's a lot of teams out there that would love to stick the knife in your back. And oh yeah, I've uh, yeah. unfortunately uh, got had experience of that myself. But um, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think you know, literally going back to to, to the, the, the paranormal club, it's for me. Being able to work with other groups, yeah, um, you know, like yourselves, like Trident, um, well, particularly locally here, we've got so so many paranormal groups, um, and there's no reason why that that we can't work together. I, I mean, I, I think uh, I, I was listening to um, what, one of your interviews. I think was uh, um, a couple of weeks ago uh, with. Um, I can't uh, remember Lee. the guy's name. Lee, Lee, that's it. Yeah, with Lee, with Lee, and um, we touched on the same subject. And I think you know, there's for for me, I want to go to events other teams are holding because I want to see how they work. I want to learn from them. Yeah. Um. You know, 
they might use the same equipment, but they might use it differently. They'll be using different equipment. Where did they get that equipment from if it's not something that's mainstream? You know, we, we've all got, you know, EMF readers. We've all got mail meters and, 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 and digital cameras. But there might be something else that they're, they're using that, that they're getting better results. Whether it's just be a... Go on, sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree with you. You know, we, we are all different. And, you know, I think most of the big event companies out there um, are, to me, ghost hunters. Yeah, where that, that's what they are. Yeah. Trident, for example, um, we try to be paranormal investigators. You yeah. know, we, we investigate what's going on. You know, we do these experiments and then if we get some good results, we want to find out what's causing those things, you know, yeah, and yeah. we do it all on the event and people get a good idea of what it's like to be an investigator as opposed to a ghost hunter. So that sort of yes. sets us aside a little bit different than the rest. I mean, I'm not saying we're better because I'm not, you know, No. and I, no. I'm still learning just as much as anyone else. Yeah, um, exactly. So, you know, I'm done. Uh, we we uh, the True Crimes Museum, for example, we had a couple of new investigators come out with us, and we we done like a human pendulum experiment. Um, yeah. Now I don't know whether you know what that is. I do. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I do. No, that's cool. So I don't have to explain it too much. <laughs> um, but that, they done the experiment a little bit different to how we normally do it. And to be yeah. honest, I think the way they done it was a lot better. So, you know, in the future, that's how we're going to be doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, and I was on an investigation, of, of, I don't know, probably about a month ago now, um, where they did exactly, again, the, the group that I, I have worked with in the past um, did the human pendulum. Um, but the, the way the, 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 the previous one um, was, was so, so different. But yeah. again, like you, I think it was so much better. Um, I'm going on another investigation with them again this weekend. Um, but it's it's just so nice to be able just to be able to see what these other people were doing. You know, whether it be on the spiritual side, whether it be uh, a technical side, it's just nice to be able to see what their beliefs are. I t- totally agree. Totally. Um, now I know Trident have got a event on the twenty fifth of March at the diving museum, yes. um, and that's that's in Gosport. Um, it is, have, yeah. have you been to that location? No, I haven't. Um, okay, not at all. I've, I was going to pick um, your brains about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been to the diving museum. Um, it does not look very big, and I will honestly say. Um, with the lights out, I can't imagine that's going to be a very safe place walking around. Um, obviously, it must be, but um, uh, it's it's interesting. Um, I'll certainly say that. But um, and I would l- love to investigate there one day, um, but uh, it's not one that I've done at the moment. No. Okay, I, we, with Trident, we, we we do know that it's a small location, so for that reason, we're only selling ten tickets to it. Yeah. So that we do what's called a Big Ten event, and we yeah. we could have any location, and we will only sell ten tickets to it. So if anyone uh, goes on the website, Big Tens own ten tickets. All the I other events. What the Big Ten was. Yeah, yeah. all the other <laughs> events are um, uh, twenty guests, and we only sell twenty. So we we yeah. still deal with small numbers, whatever. Um, but I would like to do big locations. Yeah, and only have the ten tickets available, which could work out quite expensive. But when you That's think about it, you've got. Yeah. But then when you, when you've got something like um, Woodchester Mansion, for example, and only ten tickets available, yeah, um, you're looking at about I don't know, un, say for example, hundred pound a ticket, and it's like there are only ten yeah. of you there, so <laughs> it does. Um, yeah, exactly. it does work out quite good, and you but, can yeah. do a better investigation, and it's a better quality of investigation as well. Yes, and less contamination. So, absolutely. Yeah, oh, it's all, it's all good fun. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play a little break, and will we be we will be right back after this.
The Tea Fires here at Parasearch UK Radio, discussing hauntings from around the world, the facts and the hearsay about each case. Was it real haunting or an elaborate hoax? The monetary gain or fame? Listen and discuss with me, Terra Palmer, here at the Tea Files. Join Paul Rook live at 9 pm for the Trident Paranormal Show, where he will be discussing and explaining everything from the strange, weird, and the paranormal myths and legends from fact and fiction we have all on the Trident Paranormal Show. Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. with their paranormal hindsight from across the USA, only on Parasearch UK Radio. Join Richard Clements on Thursday nights at 10 p.m. for the Mystery Hour, only on Parasearch UK Radio. David Farrant, and I'm listening to the Trident Paranormal Show on Parasearch UK. Good evening and welcome back to the Trident Paranormal Show. I'm joined by Stephen Vernon and we're talking about paranormal and setting up your own paranormal group and stuff like that. So in the break, you was telling me that you've got a theory about UFOlogy. Go for it. So it's all about or, that. <laughs> or, or UFOs in general. Um, now, I do apologise. One, if anyone else has heard this, but I don't think so, because I think it's original. And two, I promise I'm not a fruitcake. Um, basically, when you um, look or when you hear about a lot of the um, UFO sightings, they tend to be around um, military parades in Mexico, for example, military bases, um events um you know whether they be um the concord uh, i remember seeing a, a, a video recently of a, a ufo circling uh, one of the original concord flights and stuff like that yeah. so they're always around um made major events um that in in human history now at the moment if we want to see anything historical we'll go to the museum, whether it be the diving museum in Gospel, um, whether it be, um, you know, any, any other type of museum, natural history museum, um, we would do that. Now, when you listen to a lot of or even watch some of the videos of um, alleged UFOs, um, it does appear that they'll blink on, they'll be there, and then after doing whatever they do, they'll, they'll blink out, they'll, they'll disappear um, in a flash. Um, now, for me, what I believe, and I, and I genuinely do believe this, is that, as I say, at the moment, we are, are bound by just having to go to a museum. What's to say um, in three, four, five, six hundred years' time, time travel's been developed? Now, you don't need to go to a museum. You can actually sit in a pod... Or, or whatever, and you can actually go and see Concord's first flight. You can go and see what a military parade in Mexico is like. You can go to Rendlesham Forest and 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 see what the the grounds of a, a, a you know United States Air Force in a different country are like. You can actually you don't need bricks and mortar. You can actually physically go there. So for for me. A, there's no reason why a UFO could not be something that, you know, a, a time traveller from our future. Um, I'd, you know what, that, that does actually make sense. And I did actually see a video, um, I, I think it was on Facebook or one of the other social media websites, um, 
of a... It was supposed to be an alien that has been interviewed, believe it or not. Right. <laughs> and this, this alien claimed to be... It, it was one of those big greys, you know, the yeah. big grey head and the black eyes and stuff. Yeah. And it did actually claim that it was a human from our future. Yeah, but uh, that, again, for me... Um, isn't as far fetched as, as people would scoff at. You know, at the moment when I when I was younger, you know, the average height was five foot seven, five foot eight. Mm. I don't know what the average height is now, but I'm one of the shortest people I know, and I'm five foot eight. You know, so we are getting taller as a species. We are getting taller. Now, again, there's no reason why in the distant future we haven't evolved into what we are seeing. You know, the, the, there's the, the light from the sun will get brighter as the, you know, as we come towards the end of our, our, our planet's existence. But before that, what's to say that natural evolution as part of us getting taller, um, doesn't all, you know, our, our skin pigment may change because of that. Um, you know, and be, the eye sockets would naturally possibly get bigger because we're getting taller. So again, I don't think for me that's beyond, it's not too much of a, a leap forward to say, well, okay, they could well be us um, from the distant future. Yeah. So I, yeah. In, in the chat room, Mark D has already said that this alien, that alien video has already been exposed as a hoax. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Um, course, no, I, I don't. I mean, it was quite obvious. It, it just looked so fake. It was unbelievable. But it's just yeah. another theory that's out yeah, there. Exactly. And yeah. it's not, as you said, it's not that far-fetched, to be fair. And I've always no. said that it could could be time travel or even interdimensional travel, even. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it's just something that, you know, I, I can't say it was an epiphany, but it was just one day... Um, I think I was mucking about trying to create a website many years ago uh, about ufology because that is something I, I, I have a, a big, big interest in. And it was just, hang on, UFO, looking at some of the videos, hearing some of the eyewitness accounts, I was thinking, well, actually, there's no reason for, you know, people, if time travel was possible, um, why would they have to go to a museum? They wouldn't. They just go to the event. And yeah, I, I just, it, it, it does <laughs> make sense, absolutely. And as you know, you, yeah, it's not that far fetched. To be fair, um, no. That they are also experimenting with sort of time travel already. Yeah, and I, I don't see why it's it's not possible. No, exactly. So for me, I I, I think as a species, we would be. Very, very, you know, I can't remember what I think of the word, but arrogant. We'd be very arrogant to believe we are the only um, intelligent life in the universe. But really, is anybody going to come over here and, and, and see what's going on? What, why? We're no threat to anybody else. We're a threat to ourselves, but we're no threat to Stella, in, you know, anywhere else in the universe. No, but I think we could be. I think we could be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but but at the moment, I, I, I can't see people, you know, or, or, or aliens traveling billions of miles just on the off chance that, that we might be a threat, and, unless they know something in the future that we don't. So, Well, but, yeah, there, just... there is that. And I, I do think that there are life on other planets. It might not necessarily yeah. be humanoid life. But no, you know, no. even if you're talking bacterias and and viruses and germs and stuff like that, you know, it, it could open up a whole new ecosystem. You know, it, yeah. Yeah. it is quite an interesting subject. Um, and and you know, I'm I'm quite into my science fiction anyway, so I've got yeah. some really good warped ideas but um... <laughs> <laughs> there are only warped ideas until someone makes them fact but yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and um no it's it's, it's interesting definitely is um so but... go, going back to the cryptozoology you yeah know, um you said obviously that you believe that 
Nessie could be a prehistoric um, creature from the from the ice shelf and stuff like that. Yeah. But what what about Bigfoot? Do you do you think that is the same thing, or do you think it's something else? As as, as much as for me, um, cryptozoology is a really fascinating subject. I've got to be honest. I, I think you know, as, as ghost hunting is one thing, um, but for me, I think un- unless Bigfoot is standing right in front of me, or 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 Nessie is, you know, be there waving at me, I I don't necessarily believe that, that these creatures exist. If if I'm being perfectly honest, because I think the coverage we have of our planet now, particularly now mm. is so immense that, I mean, I, I, you know, Nessie aside, I think it's been proven beyond any reasonable doubt. There's nothing in, in, in Loch Ness, yeah. but you know, the depths of the ocean, who knows it's too deep. We can't go there. Um, but, but things like Bigfoot, there are some videos that are interesting. Um, there's a hell of a lot of videos that are clearly someone having a laugh, but there are some that are quite interesting. Hmm. Could it be a Bigfoot? I don't know. But then, you know, you, you could level the same argument at, at, at ghosts. You know, so, so there are some, go, you know, videos of um, apparitions that look very, very good and very believable. Are they ghosts? You, you don't know because you don't know what how it's been generated and stuff like that um no, but no for sure. me I, I i i just i find it difficult to believe that um those animals could be there without you know w- without having better proof at, at the moment you, know, you could you could level the same argument for anything paranormal you know it's, why do you know why do people have thousand pound cameras that seem to go out of focus the minute a UFO comes into sight and stuff like that? You know, it it just is. You know, so yeah, I, I totally agree. To be honest, it with, with in fact with the Bigfoot, I watched one of these documentaries on TV and they um, gathered some evidence that people had, had claimed they witnessed the Bigfoot and they actually got hair fibers. Yeah, um, from the creatures as they brushed up against trees and things, and mm. they they scientifically examined these hairs, and they come a, come out with the conclusion that it was a bear um, of between two. I think it was between the black bear and the brown bear, and that, yeah. that's sort of the creature that it is basically. So yeah, I I, I, I go with science on this one. <laughs> yeah, I I think I would. I think it's it's more likely, particularly. In the example of, of, of Bigfoot, I think that's a lot more likely to be in a species, um, you know, procreation than than it is uh, an historical beast. Yeah. Um, but you know, we all live in hope. I, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? But well, we we shall see. Maybe in the near future, we will actually get to find yeah. out what these things are. It'll exactly. Be very interesting. Um, yes. Now, the because obviously you're you're quite interested in the UFOs. What yeah. do you think about? I, I don't know if you've seen it actually. Um, it, it was discovered on the um, Google Maps, I believe it was, an under underwater base, UFO base. Have you seen that just off the coast of Miami? I think I've seen that because um, I think, in all honesty, I think it was my my other half. Um, who woke me up one morning and said, look at this, look at this. I'm, what, what, leave me alone. What? <laughs> look, 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 what is it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> leave me, wake me up, will you? Tell me when I'm awake. Um, it was, yeah, it looks really interesting. Now, for me, looking at it, um, I've got a couple of questions on that. Was one of the photos looked like it was actually on land, there's only another photo that looked like it was underwater. And one of the other photos made it look like if it was underwater, it was very close to the shore. Yeah. Um, and the, another one that it looked like it was in the middle of the ocean. But, you know, 
it, it, it could be a, it could have many, many, it could be a, a sub refueling um, base. I don't know whether that would be feasible or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I, think so I, I just, for, from my point of view, uh, I'm quite a skeptical person anyway. I think, yeah. do you know what? I think it could be an optical illusion. It because could be that. You, you, you've got your you've got your oval shape of the yep. the la- the mud or whatever at the bottom of the sea, yeah. And then it looks like pillars coming down. Um, yeah. So if anyone else um, has seen that that image, um, definitely go and have a look at it. It's just off the coast of Miami, um, mm. and yeah, I, I think it could just be an optical illusion with a shadow and the. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that's it, it, I it would make it would make a lot more sense, um, you know. With, with America, you, you don't know. It, it could be a, a secret military base. Um, but yeah, that that would be know, my second second yeah, uh, choice for it, really. You know. <laughs> or, or, or or third would be uh, uh, Doctor Knows, um, you know, Den from. <laughs> One yeah. of these, <laughs> Doctor, Doctor Evil, <laughs> Doctor Evil, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, and oh. Rendlesham Forest. Do you know much about that? Case? Um, I've UFOs. seen films. I've uh, yeah, I've seen the films. I've um, watched documentaries. I've never been there, um, but yeah, so I, I do know about it, and um, I've seen a lot of the footage. That what was, what was do you believe? Shot. Because it was um, investigated by a guy called Nick Pope, who worked yeah. for the MOD, MOD yeah. quite recently. Mr. Mr. Pope, yeah. Um, I, I, anything Mr. Pope says, unfortunately, I take with a pinch of salt. Because um, he, what... he said that there's two outcomes to this. Either it's a cover-up by the Americans, or yeah. it genuinely did happen. Yeah. And it was but, UFO. So what, it, what do you think? It, if by saying it's a cover-up by the Americans, is that not also saying it did happen? Um, but, you know, I, I, something happened. I don't think there's any question of that. Something happened. Yeah. Um, would they use that base for any of their, um, you know, uh, black op planes or, or, or projects, black projects? Probably not. Um, it's not remote enough. No. Um, it's not remote enough for you know for when when the SR seventy one was being trialled over here. Um, I, I think they used Mildenhall. Um, there are many other sites that that are, are, are a lot more um, viable for that. Yeah, ball uh, lightning, I... quite probably. Um, if I've got to say anything else, um, that would explain why the lights moved through the trees. Yeah. Um, um, I, I would personally say that's more than likely the, the proper explanation would be mm. ball lightning. Um, I don't know, but I, 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 would, I would go with ball lightning from from the, what I know of it yeah. and um, on what I've uh, seen of it, and particularly when you listen to some of the reports of the airmen as well and their radio broadcasts to their office. Yeah. Um, is it's you know they're they're talking about a crackling, they're they're talking about what well, when there wasn't crackling it being silent, um yeah for me I think it's ball lightning. It's probably the more likely explanation I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's you know it's I, I believe I might be wrong but I believe um, the, the part of the forest outside the airbase where it um, happened. Um, it's pretty marshy as well, so yeah, yeah. I, 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 th- I think that would be a, a, for me the explanation for it. But cool. again, I don't know. Okay, H- have you got any um, ev- not events, but any group m- meetings, club meetings that you're going to go out and do? Um, or... Yeah, uh, we've got because I, th- I think for me, what we've got one. Unfortunately, um, the same night, um, bad planning now on my part. Um, the same night you you're you're at the diving dive museum. Um we're we're having a a, a group walk round um uh a, a Holly Hill uh, country park um in Fairham. We're okay. just gonna literally have a uh a, a walk round. Um you know, we'll take the MF meters and stuff and, and cameras, but it's not gonna be an investigation, it's just gonna be 
hopefully, if it's uh, not raining, um, a, a nice evening out with uh, some friends, just um, seeing what we can um, gather. But other than that, if um, awesome. I, I think I did, if, other than that, I will be promoting your event. <laughs> it is raining. Well, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is that place particularly well known for paranormal reports or UFO reports or anything like that? It's well known for paranormal. Um, it's. I have not seen it. I actually haven't been there um, myself yet. Um, but uh, uh, some of the people that um, are in the club have, and um, there's a, a, a bridge that allegedly, if you set up um, torches, um, you know, just as you, you just lightly turn them so um, that they come on at but supposedly requests of spirits. If uh, you put the torches along the bridge, as spirits walk across this bridge the, the torches light up and that supposedly happened on 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 several occasions um so there are reported um spirits of young children there um so yeah i'm looking forward to it uh, it's, 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 as i say somewhere i've not been um mm. and so, somewhere that, that that you know my acquaintances and friends um have and um assure me that that it should be um quite a nice uh experience so yeah. yeah so i mean we we used to do the whole invest when when you could do the investigation you used to like uns- unscrew the back of the torch or whatever um yeah and wait for that to resp- respond to your answers and questions yeah and stuff. exactly yeah but then yeah. we I, i'm a member of a group called the assap and yes. they actually explained that it's not paranormal it's actually the cold or the yeah, weather. contracts. Uh, yeah, yeah, and contracts and filling that metal. stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. So we decided then that Did that was it. out. We we wouldn't do that. Um, no, because obviously it'd been explained. So that that's fine. We, we you know. So I was yeah. just wondering whether or not that thing on the bridge would again, be again, the same. Um, quite possibly. Um, but then if it, if you've got them all lined up, like if you have like. Ten torches, for example, lined up along yeah. this bridge, and they do it one by one. One, yeah, that, exactly. You, you'd get a, that. That would be a more interesting experiment to to yeah. run, um, I, I because think... you would think that if it is atmospherical, then it would affect all of them at the same time. Yeah, or, or, or it's going to be random. You're not going to get a patterned response. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I don't think they use ten torches. I think it's more probably more likely five. But exactly, you know, to get them on one after the other is is yeah. more interesting than than you know, torch four, torch one, torch three, torch five. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think you know, while I don't dispute that um, explanation for it, and I think in ninety nine percent of cases that probably is very valid. Yeah. Just occasionally, as with anything paranormal. There's always the odd one that throws a spanner in the works and makes you think, uh, okay, maybe I'll go back and revisit that. Absolutely. And and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Keep testing your theories and working through them and learning from other groups. That's definitely key, I think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, so. sadly, we've come to the end of the show. We've run out of Already? time. Yeah, got, I could talk. Got a minute on left. Talking. Oh, no. <laughs> right. you're, you're always you're always welcome to come back and join me on the show. Um, so Thank if you. you ever see any of my future shows coming up and there's an in- interest in that topic, yeah, let me know and I'll gladly have you do. back on. That'd be Lovely. really interesting. So uh, th- this this um, walk that you've got on the 25th is that yes that that's free to join. Absolutely, it's free. Um, one of the things that I want to do with the club um, at the moment is um, shy away from pay- paid events um, because there are people that do it better. Simple as that, you know. Whether it be Trident, there you know there are groups that are set up to do it better than than I can. So this this is you know just well, it's not, a, a, it's not a, better than you can. It's just different. <laughs> <laughs> it is better because they've got the organisational <laughs> well, they've got the organisational skills of it um, and they, they've got the contacts I don't at the moment so absolutely well we, we can always help you out there not a problem so, thank you but I will I will um, talk to you more about that a bit later so, okay but I, I, I just to want to thank you um, for joining me tonight 
it's been an absolute pleasure. You're welcome. And I look it. forward to... Uh, I think Richard's put your um, Gospel Paranormal group um, page on the chat room so people can just click that. And That's they fantastic, can thank you. Go straight to you. Um, so, yeah, that that's all really so thank you for joining me tonight steve and i want to say thank you to everyone that's joined me in the chat room it's been an absolutely brilliant night and hopefully we'll see you all again soon so stay safe and see you next week bye bye for now The Tea Fires here at Parasearch UK Radio, discussing hauntings from around the world, the facts and the hearsay about each case. Was it real haunting or an elaborate hoax? The monetary gain or fame. Listen and discuss with me, Terra Palmer, here at the Tea Fires. Join Paul Rook live at 9 pm for the Trident Paranormal Show where he will be discussing and explaining everything from the strange, weird and the paranormal myths and legends. From facts and fiction, we have all on the Trident Paranormal Show. Wednesday nights at 9pm with their paranormal hindsight from across the USA, only on Parasearch UK Radio. Join Richard Clements on Thursday nights at 10pm for the Mystery Hour, only on Parasearch UK Radio. for listening to the trident paranormal show see you all next week for another amazing topic good night everyone and thank you for listening